So, I pick up this subwoofer at a flea market for about $5. It was missing its external display and infrared remote receiver. The remote control and the satellite speakers. Didn't see one like this before, so I know that if it works, I just plug anything on it and have a nice subwoofer, but I wasn't that lucky. You see, typical amplifier systems we all analog in the past so it was kind like an old car, if for some reason it stops working in the middle of the desert, there was a 80% chance you can make some MacGyver move and make it work again. But now with all those computers in the cars, no more platinum and condenser, rotors or carburetors. If a car broke, you need a computer to read the codes and probably there is a computer or some sort sensor that the computer need to replace in order to make it work again. Same here with this system, almost everything in this is digital, so, if a piece is missing, there is no work around. Almost. The subwoofer speaker's still analog, so we can just replace everything inside and install an analog amplifier to make it work with another system. But it is kind of waste to throw such a fine amplifier so let's see what we can do with those remaining parts. This is going to be a two-part video, so spoilers ahead, I won't have the digital input and amplifier ready in this video, but I will take it apart and see what's inside and how it works and install an analog amplifier to see how it sounds. In a later video, I will try to make it work with its original amplifier and try to make it work with its original inputs. Some may say, just buy the missing parts and that's it, but, this channel is about recycling or reusing what we have on hand. For me, there is no point on buying the parts since I could get the whole system in eBay for about $200, just the front speakers in my home theater cost double than that, so, yes. I could just buy it but what's the fun on that? Besides that less than I couldn't find a replacement infrared receiver, display and remote control anywhere on eBay or Amazon or any other place in the internet. So, let's get started. Who is or was SPHEREX? Well it was a Canadian company who make a 3 year deal with Microsoft to produce a 5.1 sound system for the Xbox that it will cost about $499, but since Microsoft was not and I think still not a dominant player in the game console market, these guys at Spherex designed the system to be compatible with other systems. I looked all over for upgrades, schematics, some kind of customer support and nothing, absolutely nothing about this company. Mirage, who owned the patents for the Omnipolar speaker still exist but they won't give you any support on Sphere's products. So if you brought this system brand new, this is what came in the box, but as we said before, I picked it up in a flea market, I did not get any of those extras but the subwoofer. So in the back of the subwoofer box, we have, one 3.5mm headphone jack, five output jacks connectors for the five satellite speakers, the main switch, a fuse, the 9-pin connector for the infrared receiver and display, a USB input mean for firmware upgrades to optical digital inputs, one coaxial digital input, one stereo analog input, and the expansion slot meant also for future upgrades that never happen. Let's open it and see what's inside. We have to remove these 10 screws and all the electronics will came out. Just disconnect the speaker and the transformer. We have the main 300 watts amplifier for the 5 speakers and 1 subwoofer. A power supply. The inputs board. The toroidal transformer, by the way, good quality sound system uses toroidal transformers and not E ones. It has a decoding and interconnections board. And the 8 inches 100 watts subwoofer speaker. Let's take a look at the amplifier.
It has a 3.5 mm headphone 3.5 mm. The RCA connectors for the 5 satellite speakers 3 Apple GTX-X2100 class H amplifiers. A tiny TDA-1308 class AB amplifier for the headphones and the DDX-8001 digital audio processor also from Apple G. Like I said before, this is pure digital equipment. Even the amp ICs are digital and I am not talking about class D amps, but amps with digital inputs and control. So if I wanted to make it work as a standalone unit, I still need to send the audio signal in a digital serial stream. The digital audio processor also has its volume and tone adjustments via digital signals so you cannot just plug a potentiometer and expect to be able to control the volume. For instance, these are the data stream you have to send to set the volume in all channels to 1. So there you have, maybe I will need an Arduino Uno to make those changes. Next, we have the power supply, not much to see in here, a regular power supply with an output of 34 volts for the main amp and also a 5 volts for the digital circuits. Next, the inputs board. This is weird but I found out that the infrared receiver and display unit are connected directly to the USB controller. I am thinking that maybe we can replace all the controls from the remote control and display connecting the computer. It is not as easy as it sounds since we need to create the drivers in order to accomplish this. We have an USB device controller chip, an integrated circuit that I couldn't find any information of what it is for, an octal bus transceiver. An analog to digital converter, another chip that I couldn't find info about it, and TTL hex inverter, and the inputs jacks. We also have the interconnection and decoding board. Here is where everything gets together and it receives audio signals for the external equipment. Here it gets decoded if it has DTS sound or Dolby or something like that, and then it is sent to digital audio processor in the amplifier board. And finally, we have the toroidal transformer and the 8 inches speaker subwoofer. So pretty much you can figure out how this works. It received the 120 volts from the wall, it gets lowered to 34 volts. Then the power supply sends the current to the main board along with a 5 volts line. If you plug something in the input jack, the CS8416 will select the source and send the signal to the DSP chip which will decode any digital codification or send it as it is to the DX8001, will add volume and tone control and send it to the main amplifier and the amplifier will send it to the speakers. Here is a very basic schematic of how everything interconnects. Since everything inside is digital, Whenever an analog stereo input is received, it needs to be converted into a digital signal to be decoded and amplified. The rest of the inputs are digital, so they are just sent to the Sirius Digital Audio Receiver CS8416 and then sent to the decoding board. Once decoded it is sent to the main amplifier and it is being received by the DDX8001 to process the volume and tone control. From there it goes to the 3 DDX2100 class H amplifiers, and from the output of the right and front speaker amplifier, an analog signal goes to the TDA1308 headphone amplifier, the only analog M in this equipment. In order to take everything apart, you just start removing all the screws you see until everything falls apart. There are four wires that need to be desoldered, and in order to remove the amp and the input board from the back plate, we need to heat the glue with a heat gun, of course, and pull it gently into its separates form the plate. Now, I have attached an external amplifier to the Xbox subwoofer so I can test how the enclosure and the subwoofer speaker works to see if it worthy to go ahead and keep trying to make the original amplifier to work or not. video will try to make the digital component to work. Thank you.